Welcome into the In the Money podcast for KeenelandSelect.com, our last one for the spring meet. We'll get back to our regular Saturday rotation of looking at stakes races and put fours around the country. But uh, coming up today, it's our final edition of the Keeneland podcast for the spring meet. Tom Leach here along with Jim Goodman as we take a look at the closing day stake, the Bewitch for <clears throat> Phillies and Mayors, uh, four and up at a mile and a half on the turf. And given the fact that uh, I think that the, the uh, rain's probably done, it looks like, until maybe later on Friday, that hopefully this uh, turf course will firm up a little bit, but there still could be some give in the ground, so you can factor that into your handicapping. But let's jump into the Bewitch, Jim, and uh, can you beat Daddy's Little Darling, I guess is the question. Well, I don't think so. Uh, this is a nice field, or at least the outside part of the field, with Daddy's Little Darling, Daring Duchess, and so Extreme. I think you can make a case for uh, the other two being in good form right now, and Dave's Little Darling has only had one race this year uh, where she ran uh, in the Hillsborough at Tampa and ran a, a fourth, got beat by four-star crook and Proctor's Ledge and La Cornell. There's nothing uh, to be ashamed of there. And she likes Keeneland. She showed that on the turf course last year, almost winning the QE2. And the mile and a half is a question mark. She's never been a mile and a half, but she's won over a million dollars, outclasses this field by a long way. I can make a case uh, for Sully's Dream or Daring Duchess to, to get in the money. I think Daring Duchess has to get an easy lead, and I don't think Coco Channel is going to let her do that. Um, if she does get an easy lead, she could take them a long way. But uh, Daddy's Little Darling is going to be my pick here. Um, Sully's Dream, you might look at Vagabond Princess, who's running in the eighth race today. Uh, she ran second to Sully's Dream. Sully's Dream beat her pretty easily. Uh, in New Orleans at the fairgrounds. And the Vagabond Princess runs big. I had her Sully's Dream last race a little bit, so that's a little angle you can look at. But Daddy's Little Darling is going to be my pick here and probably going to be my single to pick four. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way. Um, the only one that intrigues me is Sully's Dream, just on the improvement last time and a big big buyer figure jump and sometimes just an, an, an improving horse can ride that wave for a while. But... I'm also always a little leery of big buyer figures that in big buyer improvement on a horse that just gets an easy lead. So um, Sully's dream is the, the only one that probably wouldn't be a shock if uh, she were to beat daddy's little darling, but uh, Daddy's little darling looks awfully good. She ran well here in the uh, fall on the turf course. Uh, Mike Smith is in the saddle and those were really good grade one types that she just missed against in her 2018 debut. So Daddy's Little Darling is uh, probably going to be a single for me as well. Uh, let's move to the late pick four, which starts in the seventh race. We've got a non-winners of one allowance at a mile and an eighth on the turf. Then you've got uh, an allowance optional claiming for fillies and mares at a mile and a sixteenth, and it finishes up with three-year-olds, uh, three-year-old maidens on the turf going long, a mile and three sixteenths. So give me your pick four. Okay, pick four in the first leg. I'm going to go three deep. Uh, my win pick is going to be Sky Promise, the two for Kenny McPeak and uh, B.J. Hernandez, who's ridden really well this race. He's got nine wins going into Thursday's card. And um, this horse ran in the J.R. Stakes and the uh, Jeff Ruby Stakes at, at Turfway, way out of it early and finished in the middle of the pack. They, I don't know if they had any derby aspirations with him or not, but um, back on the turf now where it seems to be he belongs. I think they were just trying to get a graded stakes up there thinking he would take to the poly track well he ran well in the Pataglia. those races didn't come back very strong but if you look back at his turf form um, he fits here uh, sniper kitten for make michael maker and joel rosario uh, two really good efforts at Gulfstream. one at a mile and one at seven and a half furlong stretches out to a mile and eight now but rosario takes over from harmio and that's a big step up and um, i think that uh, this colt has a chance as well and then the other horse i would lead is uh, I would use his soul beam for Dallas Stewart uh, coming off of fairgrounds. Good effort at optional claiming uh, level. And, again, Jose Ortiz uh, over Pedroza is a big move up in the jockey rankings. So I think those three horses I'm going to stick with, or two, three, eight. Eighth race, I really couldn't make heads or tails. So I'm going to single the ninth, and I'm going to take all in the eighth. Uh, Vagabond Princess probably looks best in here coming off the fairgrounds effort uh, to Sully's dream. But I really couldn't eliminate very many horses here. So I think Dora Danza for uh, Kellen Gorder and Giroux has a shot. I think uh, the outside horse mistress of the night for Richard Baltus 
actually begin to send. Anita has a shot, and I really couldn't eliminate much, so I'm going to just hit the all button here. So I'm going to go two, three, eight with all. I am going to single Daddy's little darling in the ninth race, so the five horse there. Close it out with five horses. Uh, Broth, the one for uh, Pachinko, just because he throws one in there every once in a while to Keenan Meat, and I'd hate to lose the big four because I left him out. CC Rider scratched out of a race on um, uh, Thursday, or is entered a race on Thursday. I'm assuming we'll go here. He's also eligible there, so that big 80 buyer last time out on the first time on the turf jumps out at you. Nantucket. Uh, for Rodolfo Brissett and Giroux has a shot. Say the word with Ortiz in motion. The six and triple dog there for Brad Cox, who's going to be the leading trainer, and Corey Lannery. So I'm going to take the five fairly obvious horses, one, three, five, six, eight. So that would be two, three, eight with all, with five, with one, three, five, six, eight. And if my calculator is correct, that is $60. Uh, starting the seventh race for me, and we have uh, differing opinions here. I end up going to Morning Stride, coming out of that race last month at the fairgrounds. The third place finisher won here at Keeneland. The runner up ran second on Sunday, so I think that was maybe a pretty good race. Um, Joe Sharp, 28% off uh, this kind of uh, second start off this kind of a, a long layoff that this horse had. So I'm going to go Morning Stride for my win pick here. King of Candy comes out of the same race, so I like Morning Stride. I've got to like King of Candy. Uh, Sniper Kitten I'm going to use. Take that for data I'm going to use. A couple of nice maiden winners. Um, could be talked into adding the eight Soul Beam as well, but I'm just going to go with those first four, one, three, four, and seven, um, and go with five in the next leg. Dora Danza was my win pick. Big improvement in the third off the layoff last time at Oaklawn. And uh, I like that. This horse is one here. But uh, Mannerly, uh, Walsh's horses have been running well lately. Walsh and Le Peru here. So the three, Mannerly. Uh, the five, Impasse uh, for Rosario and, and Lucas. Uh, the uh, two, uh, Sweet Legacy. The one, Vagabond Princess. I'm going to use all five of those. Uh, Dora Danza is just a, a shaky win pick, but uh, I'm going deeper there. Single Daddy's Little Darling. And then I'm going to go five in the last leg. Triple Dog Dare for Brad Cox. Um, who knows, could come down to this race for the trainer's title. Uh, as we go into the Thursday card as we tape this, uh, he had a uh, slight lead of two wins over Wesley Ward. He is uh, very good with first-time turfers, very good on the dirt-to-turf move. So both of those apply here. This horse improved in the second start for Cox and has worked well here. So Triple Dog Dare is the one I like. Say the word, motion. Uh, Grand Moshe, you always got to look at, I think, going long on the turf. So that one uh, is interesting for me. The six, uh, Jailhouse Kitten, CC Rider, Nantucket. I'm going to use all three of those. So five horses there for me. So one, three, four, seven with one, two, three, four, five with five with three, five, six, seven, eight to try to get out and finish strong in the pick four on closing day. Uh, we'll have another podcast on Saturday. Uh, looking at uh, one of the weekend pick four opportunities. And then, of course, next week, podcasts on Friday and Saturday for Oaks and Derby Day. And uh, wish you best of luck with your Friday wagers. This is the In the Money Podcast for KeelanSelect.com.